Okay, well, Jess, uh, if you remember from our current episode, Jess has just asked me to risk my life to get her granola bars during a tornado. And I'm glad she did, because these are some delicious granola bars. It was a good call. Now, in the background, I'd like to point out that what's playing on TV is that guy from OxyClean. Uh, advertising for Mighty Putty. That's a sad social commentary when the, the soundtrack of my death is that guy from OxyClean advertising for Mighty Putty. <laughs> That's not how I expected it. I, I expected it to be R.E.M. playing This is the End of the World as we know it. Hey, they played that at Joe's Crab Shack when we were just there. Hey, when did you go to Joe's Crab Shack without me? I called you and you were being poopy. He was being... Poopy. Copper Dog seems unaffected by the threat of a tornado ripping through our house <laughs> at hurricane speeds. I don't know, he's hiding under a blanket. <laughs> he's like the strongest man I know. <laughs> Nothing affects him. Copper dog? Copper dog. Yeah. Musashi's not even afraid. He's he's outside the shelter. Lenny Bruce is not afraid, neither am I. It said eye of the hurricane, and then it starts beeping over there. This is certainly the end. It must be. Pray for us, people. Guess what? Ooh. Turn that up. Back. You're a good man, Dad. Oh, will I? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get photographic evidence of my new shirt? See how pretty? I hope you like it. You're going to be buried in it. Hey, that's not very nice. I decided to bring what every man needs to survive. <laughs> We're going to use that to build a rudimentary radio when all the power goes down. Or a lathe. Mm. <laughs> all you need is a lathe. Rudimentary lathe. <laughs> Something just expired. You missed it. We beat the monsters, people. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I hear playing Words of Tornado. Uh, and, uh, we also Hi. Have some possibilities I'm with picking this blanket apart in boredom. So who do we trust? We trust the internet with our lives or we trust the local news weathercaster? That's not local though, that's uh, international. No, national. National. However, the national weather station is local. Alright. Well, the plot thickens. We must make a decision. The TV says it's safe to go back outside of our shelter. But the Internet says we should stay here because tornadoes are still active. What do we do? And in both cases, both cases we're relying on the weatherman. And as we all know from popular movies and history, since when can the weatherman break the weather? I make the weather. <laughs> okay, people. Uh, this is a life or death situation, so I think we're going to rely on your vote. If you'll just text 123 Tornado 1 if we should stay inside the shelter, 123 Tornado 2 if we should leave. Our lives are in your hands. To understand why the Amish unplugged from the grid is to understand why they live the way they do. The Amish you married him. That's all I can say. The Amish unplugged from the grid. And there isn't probably any better That does not make them immune to tornadoes. <laughs> They may not even know a tornado's coming because they've unplugged from the grid. It's a copper dog. It's disturbing on video. <laughs> it's an alien.
Jesus were different, but not their lifestyle. But when the original came here, as far as the dress, there was still very little difference. The Industrial Revolution in the late 18th century <laughs> with its trains, cars, Daddy, and telephones forced the Amish to make a choice. He made you appear. Substantial. Oh, very nice. Oh, cover dark, oh, we exposed you. Oh, look at that face. We exposed him <laughs> to the tornado. I think the action is just about over here. At this point, you may want to consider watching something else. <laughs> Here's the conclusion of our tornado journey. <laughs> Through my expert guidance and leadership, we have successfully survived. <laughs> and the system has downgraded us down to a simple tornado watch. Conditions still are favorable. However, there are no immediate threats of tornado as there were before. I take sole credit. <laughs> and I think I should get paid well. I don't know if we caught this on video, but Dan was appointed the tornado captain because of his experience. Uh, we had interviewed several qualified candidates, including myself and Jess. And Copper Dog even applied, but didn't make it on account of he doesn't talk. Yeah. And he, Although so his resume was quite impressive. It was. It was much more impressive than Jess's. Hey! Who... <laughs> who wanted us to vacuum the floor before we came back into our emergency <laughs> shelter. I'd like to point out this is my wife, the same one who, when we went out backpacking in the woods, in bear country, she brought sanitary wipes that were berry flavored. <laughs> berry flavor. <laughs> uh, so... Dan's job has been admirable, however, I'd like to note that when I went to peek out the window, most of the windows of the neighbors showed me neighbors in their couches watching TV comfortably, not behind a tornado shelter. I would like to point out that when, that when a tornado rips through an area of Kansas, particularly someplace like, say, Greensburg, and decimates the entire city of 1600, seven people die. When a tornado comes through Atlanta, as it did a couple weeks ago, um, it kills 50 because people just don't know what to do or don't care. Um, and it was a small tornado in comparison. And faithful viewer, I can only close by saying, Dan, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Podcast out. <now. laughs>